Good morning, fellow Gracians. My name is Kim Tat. I've retired from the corporate world and have taken up a part-time lecture assignment. From late February this year, all my work has to be done online from home. And like everyone else, whether we do our work at home or on site, we do our best to discharge our responsibilities, even if nobody is looking over our shoulders. And this leads us into today's devotional titled, The Faithful Servant. We will be reflecting on Matthew chapter 24. In this chapter, Jesus foretold of his glorious return at the end times. He gave us an idea of the signs that would precede his second coming. There will be wars and threats of wars, famines and earthquakes. Persecution of his followers will be severe and sin will be rampant. But as to the exact date and time of his return, nobody knows except the Father. The chapter concludes with Jesus' charge to his followers to be ready for his coming. He wants us to be like a faithful servant, responsibly managing the master's affairs, even though we may not know when the master will return. I like to focus on Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 and 46. A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. On the day that Jesus returns, we all want to be found like the faithful servants doing the work that the master has entrusted us with. What then is this work? I believe that while we must be faithful to discharge the duties of our God-given work, we must also intentionally look out for opportunities to preach the good news to those around us. A few years after I retired from my last job, I learned that an ex-colleague was hospitalized for late-stage cancer. I shall address this ex-colleague as Mr. Lim. Now, Mr. Lim and I were not really acquainted. As you see, he was working at a site while I was the GM at head office. Nevertheless, I felt the Holy Spirit leading me to speak to him. At the first hospital visit, the ward was crowded and all I could do was to give him a Christian motivational book. Same thing at the second visit, there were many ex-colleagues visiting him after the visiting hours, I went down with my ex-colleagues to the canteen for a drink. But I felt a prompting to go back up to the ward, which I did after the drink. And this time, I was the only visitor. But I found Mr. Lim to be sound asleep. So I prayed that the Lord would wake him up and that he would be receptive to the gospel. And guess what? Within five seconds after my prayer, Mr. Lim opened his eyes. I now have my chance to share one-on-one -on -one about Christ and without the distractions of other visitors. Mr. Lim accepted Christ there and then. Hallelujah. And two weeks later, he passed on into eternity, having received the promise of the salvation. I praise the Lord for giving me the opportunity to share with Him to somebody within my circle. So brothers and sisters, let us not only be ready for Jesus' return, but also to help others in our world to be ready, as what Pastor Elvin shared on day one of this devotional series on Matthew. Let's ask God to use us in His salvation master plan here at Grace and wherever He has placed us in. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for the signs that points to Jesus' imminent return. Help us to be constantly keeping watch, to faithfully discharge our responsibilities to do the work that You have entrusted us with. May we be found pleasing to you on that day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, may I also encourage you to also go through today's devotional notes. Have a blessed day. Bye.